<laughs> the Taft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> All over the country, the folks who've tried Kraft's wonderful natural cheese are saying, this is the cheese we've been waiting for. Yes, Kraft's newest cheese called K-Brand Natural is a very special cheese. It's a cheddar with a mellow flavor, a melt-in-your-mouth texture, and made of pasteurized milk. Remember the name, K-Brand Natural Cheddar. Listen for more about Kraft's latest triumph in cheese making later in the program. The great Gildersleeve is one of those tradition-loving Americans who believes Thanksgiving should be spent at home with his family. Yes, sir, and a big fat turkey. He believes it so strongly that he has closed up the water department and gone home half a day early. You bet. If anybody wants water, all they have to do is turn a tap. <laughs> well, hello, Marjorie. Lovely day, isn't it? Looks like Indian summer's come back. Marjorie, I spoke to you. Hmm? Oh, sorry, Uncle Mort. Hello. Ah, yes. Weather like this that makes you want to be up and doing. Good day for football, hunting, or sitting by the fire. Guess I'll sit by the fire. What are your plans, my dear? Uncle, I'm trying to write a letter. Oh? Uh, Marshall Bullard. Psst, dream boy. Uncle, you looked. I thought you'd forgotten about young Bullard. He's home from school for the holidays. Then why write him a letter? He lives right across the street. You can yell to it. Oh, Marshall, you dream boy. Marshall and I are not speaking. Oh, well, Mr. Bullard and I aren't speaking either, but I don't write him mushy letters. <laughs> Where's Leroy? Out in the backyard playing. He is? Why don't I hear him? Count your blessings. He's been tearing through the house all day with Craig. Another Bullard. We're surrounded. I wonder what they're up to. Awfully quiet around here. Oh. Spoke too soon. What's going on out there? Oh, Bertie, nearly ran over you. That's all right, Mr. Gilsey. Don't mind me. I'm used to being run over around here. Huh? What's this? Especially when there ain't no school. Kids all over the place. Cans all over the place, too, Bertie. What happened? I just made it to the door on a dead run before everything slipped. Now, just look at all them groceries. Have the boys been up to something, Bertie? I ain't saying nothing. I ain't no stool pigeon. <laughs> I ain't no convoy truck either. <laughs> Uh, convoy truck? Just because I'm carrying a load of groceries, I ain't no convoy truck. Bomb Bertie, Bomb Bertie, I ain't no convoy truck. I'll attend to him, Bertie. Have they been up on that roof again? I ain't saying nothing. Except someday one of these bombs is going to go off like Vicky and Nene, and you won't have no more Bertie. <laughs> Darn kid, sorry, Bertie. I'll go right out there. I ain't saying nothing, but I ain't no convoy truck. No boys know how to play anymore. Wonder what they're up to. Hiding back of the garage. Come on, Craig, grab hold of it. Okay. We gotta point it right over the garage where the moon comes up. Yeah. Huh? Oh, hi, Unc. Uh, you want something, Unc? Leroy, what's this I hear about you and Craig bombing Bertie? Only playing, Unc. Yeah, only playing. Well, that's no way to play. She had the Thanksgiving turkey in those groceries. What are you doing now? Isn't that an old coal chute? Yeah, for launching rockets. Rockets? We're just playing, Unc. Like in a comic book. Shut up, Craig. Uh, Craig, why do you have that exhaust pipe tied around you? Leroy's going to send me to the moon. What? <laughs> Does your mother know about this, Craig? No, nah, she wouldn't let me go. Yeah. <laughs> We're just playing, Unc. We fill the exhaust pipe with carbide, pour some water down the top. And... Leroy, you boys are playing with fire. No, we're not. Carbide just bubbles and smells. Now, see here. There'll be no playing with carbide and exhaust pipes. Why can't you kids play some nice safe game? Like what? That's any fun. Well, if you have to build something instead of trying to be like Buck Rogers, yeah. Why don't you build a nice raft like Tom Sawyer? Who's Tom Sawyer? Who's Tom Sawyer? Uh, oh, yeah. He and his pal, Huckleberry Finn, knew how to play, that's all. Like real American boys. Instead of trying to blow each other up. A raft? Hey, not bad, Unc. Will you help us build this 
Were these planks... Uh, build it? Well, uh, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn did those things themselves, Leroy. That was the real fun of it. I get it. Well, we can't drag those big planks down to the creek. We're just kids. Crick? Why don't you just pretend the driveway is the crick? The driveway? Sure, why not? I'll buy you the book, my boy. It'll tell you how to build the raft and to have fun doing it. I want to be a rocket! <laughs> You'll have more fun building a raft, Craig. Leroy said I could be a rocket! I'll go home and cry, baby. I'll get piggy. No, Leroy. I was a rocket, Dad, you kid! I hate you! Oh, you little rocket! Did, did I call some? Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Didn't see you. What are you up to, Gildersleeve? What's this all about? Craig started the fight. He kicked out on the shins. He did? Let's see. Never mind. And then he called out the big waterlogged Budinsky. <laughs> Craig did that? Well, maybe I should speak to him, Gildersleeve. Well, it might not be a bad idea. If I've told him once, I've told him a hundred times never to repeat things he hears around the house. What? <laughs> Now, Gildersleeve, what was Craig crying about? Well, Bullard, I was only trying to teach the boys to play safe and sane games. Forget bombs and rockets and get back to the good old days of Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. Now, there was a real boy, Tom Sawyer. A great inspiration for boys. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, I was just about to take the boys down and buy them the book. You were? Well, that's great, Gildersleeve. Darn decent of you to take an interest in my boy. Nothing at all. I, uh, I'm afraid I misunderstood you, Gildersleeve. I apologize. Well, that's all right, Mr. Bullard. And believe me, from now on, I'll never worry about Craig when he's playing with Leroy and you. With me? Well, I was just going to get him the book. But you don't have to worry, Mr. Bullard. I'll keep an eye on the boys. <laughs> Cigars? No, Leroy. You have your book. You and Craig go on home and build your little raft. Well, we'll just come in and look at the comic books while you're getting them. Yeah, Buck Rogers. Now, Craig, forget about Buck Rogers. Run along and play like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. Okay, Uncle. Come on, Huckleberry. <laughs> yes, sir. I guess I know how to handle children. Hello, Peavy. Hey, customer. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I guess I got engrossed in what I was reading and didn't hear you come in. That's all right, Peavy. I know how it is to get interested in the book. I just bought one. Tom Sawyer. Oh, excellent book, Tom Sawyer. I think you'll enjoy it. It's for Leroy, Peavy. Well, it's an excellent book for Leroy, then. Yes, yes. I didn't think you'd have it, so I picked it up at the bookstore. Well, I have it at home. I was just reading about whitewashing the fence again the other evening. <laughs> Young Sawyer was quite a boy. But nowadays, our big call is for these pocket mysteries. Pocket mysteries? What good are they, Peavy? Well, they fit the pocket. <laughs> just look at your shelves, Peavy. Nothing but mysteries and comic books. I'll bet this is where Leroy gets all of his wild ideas. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, it is. It ought to be a law against them. Well, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. These comic books are quite progressive at times. Had the atomic bomb before the Russians. And their rockets and spaceships are way ahead of ours. Bombs, rockets, and spaceships. Peavy, hereafter I forbid you to sell any of those books to Leroy. Well, just as you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. Although he hasn't been buying any. But if you don't want him to come in, sprawl on the floor and read them from cover to cover, I'll tell him. Well, he won't be doing it anymore, Peavy. I'm selecting his reading material now. Eh, better have about six cigars, enough to tide me over tomorrow. Oh, I meant to tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve, we'll be open tomorrow afternoon, if you should care for something. Open on Thanksgiving Day, Peavy? Well, along toward evening, we usually have quite a brisk run on bicarbonate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, too bad you can't spend the day at home with Mrs. Peavy. Well, 
Every business has its drawbacks and compensations, I guess. Six cigars, that'll be 42 cents. 42, yes, there you are. Now you can get back to your book. What are you reading, Peavy? Uh, me? Uh, well, I... Uh, uh, Let me see. Peavy, not amazing comics. Not you. Well, things have been a little slow today. Look at this. A nine-foot Esther Williams in a leopard skin boiling a missionary. <laughs> That's no stuff for kids to read. Well, I'm no kid. <laughs> Conditions are worse than I thought. Goodbye, Superman. <laughs> So there the boys were, Floyd, playing with a homemade rocket. Do you know what I did? You blew up? No, I didn't. I marched Leroy right downtown and bought him a book. No kidding? I bought one for Lovey once. Hold still now, I'm going around your ear. Mm. You can do anything you want with the right ear. Just hold the left one still. Mm. There. And you know what book I got him? No, what'd you get him? Tom Sawyer. Kid's book? Of course it's a kid's book. Didn't you ever read Tom Sawyer, Floyd? Didn't you have any fun? <laughs> Don't worry. Little Floydy Munson had fun. <laughs> well, every boy should read Tom Sawyer. I guess it was never assigned to me. Some of my teachers was pretty dumb. Tom Sawyer could have fun right in his own yard, whitewashing a fence or building a raft. That's the way I want Leroy to play. Like Tom Sawyer. Hello, Floyd. Greetings of the festive season. Hi, Judge. Have a chair. How soon will you be ready to work on a real head of hair? Oh, hello, Gildy. <laughs> hello, Judge, and don't go gobbling like a Thanksgiving turkey. You're just sticking your neck out. Take off your collar and tie, Judge. I'm just about through. Thank you, Floyd. Where you been all day, Gildy? I tried to call you at the office twice, and nobody answered. Take the afternoon off? It so happens, Judge, that there are more important things in a man's life than work, such as spending some time with his children when they're out of school. He bought Leroy a book, Tom Sawyer. Well, that's nice. Fine book, Gildy. I just hope a boy with Leroy's imagination doesn't try to put any of the stunts into practice. I nearly killed myself three times trying to do what Tom Sawyer did. What's this, Hooker? Painting a fence don't sound so dangerous to me. Yeah, he got others to paint the fences, Floyd, while he went out and stole rafts. What do you mean, stole rafts, Hooker? He built the raft. He stole it, Gildy. Look it up. He and Huck Finn and Joe Harper stole it at night. Well, they knew how to have fun anyway, like real American boys. Yeah, you call running away from home fun. Who ran away from home? They did, when they became pirates. You remember? Pirates? You didn't tell me about them, Commish. Hey, Leroy'd make a good one. <laughs> the Black Avenger, the Red Hander, and the Terror of the Seas pushed right out into the Mississippi on a raft at midnight, right into the raging current, swept downstream for miles. No fooling, just kids? Well, Leroy was just going to play with the raft on the driveway. That chance of Leroy staying very long in the driveway with the raft. Well, well then what happened, Judge? Storm came up, they all got soaked to their skins. Wonder they didn't catch pneumonia. Pneumonia, little Leroy. <laughs> a mighty dangerous escapade. Yeah, I bet they got a lacing when they got home, Judge. I would have. Well, no, they didn't. Everybody thought that they were dead. Oh, you tell a jolly story, Judge. Well, that's the way it happened, Gildy. Read the book. You nearly threw there, Floyd. Yep. You ready for the shave? Forget the shave. Let me out of here. <laughs> We're not in the backyard or the garage. Bertie! Bertie, have you seen Leroy and Craig? Leroy and Craig? Aren't they out in the backyard? No, Bertie. I just looked. When did you see him last? I haven't seen him, Mr. Gillsleeve, since they barged through here and jerked the tail feathers out of my turkey. Said they're going to be pirates. Needed them for their hat. Pirates? Yes, sir. I guess they're going to be Turkish pirates. <laughs> Bertie, this is no laughing matter. Marjorie! Hello, Mark. What's all the excitement? Marjorie, your little brother. Have you seen him? Oh, he and Craig went upstairs with a book and some dirty old turkey feathers two hours ago. Oh, my goodness. Are you sure they're still up there? Monkey, what's the matter? Leroy's never stayed in his room two hours in his life. Not even when he's sick. Leroy! Leroy! The window's open. They've gone out the window and down the tree. Uh, little Leroy. 
What's this? A note on his little bed. Uh, dear Aunt Polly. Aunt Polly? Uh, we've gone down to the creek to build a raft. By the time you read this, there's no telling where we'll be. Signed, The Terror of the Seas in the Black Avenger. P.S. Written in blood. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will continue the search in just a minute. For all you folks who like a natural cheese, especially a rich-flavored mellow cheddar, here's news to make your mouth water in anticipation. Now, Kraft, those masters of fine cheese making, give you a natural cheddar with a uniformly delicious flavor and texture, and made from pasteurized milk. It's called K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand. I don't understand. You say this is a natural cheese, and yet it's made of pasteurized milk? That's right. Every drop of milk is carefully pasteurized. K-Brand sounds wonderful. What does it look like? In your dealer's refrigerator case, you'll see a big 10-pound bar and a sparkling transparent wrapper marked K-Brand Natural all down the top and sides. And that wrapper is mighty important. You see, K-Brand is sealed right in that wrapper before it goes to the curing room. And it ages to a mellow goodness right in the same spick-and-span wrapper. You mean it has no cheesecloth or paraffin coating? K-Brand has no rind at all. Curing natural cheese in a sealed wrapper is another craft triumph. Then every bit of, of K-Brand is usable. Every bit. And every bit is downright delicious, too. In sandwiches, with pie, for snacks. Next time you shop, have your dealer cut a big portion for you. Remember the name K-Brand, the natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. In the manner of Tom Sawyer, Leroy and his little friend Craig Bullard have disappeared in the direction of the raging creek with planks to build a raft. A hasty reconnoiter has revealed no trace of them. And now, rising to the emergency, the worried man has summoned his friends to the search. I've got to find Leroy and poor little Craig. Oh, what will his father say? Where's that Floyd? He should have been here 20 minutes ago. And Hooker can't even get in touch with the old goat. Marjorie! Here are your hip boots, Uncle Mort. Why do you have holes cut in the toes? Well, they're always getting filled with water. <laughs> the creek isn't hip deep, is it? Pretty high this time of the year, my dear. No telling what's happened to the boys. Marjorie, do you think I should call the police? Well, I'd wait a little while, Anki. Leroy always shows up in time for dinner. Marjorie, when Leroy disappears and leaves a note addressed to Aunt Polly... And it's written in blood. We've got to be prepared for the worst. But Aunt Polly was Tom Sawyer's aunt in the book. And they were always writing notes in blood. They were? Ye gods, Marjorie, what have I done to the boy? Any news yet, Miss Gilfleeze? He's bleeding, Bertie. Who's bleeding? Little Leroy. He must have cut his finger going in my jam jar then. The strawberry jam smeared all over the house. What's that? Let me taste that note. Uh, it is strawberry. You see, Yankee? Well, he's missing anyway, and I'll find him if I have to call out the whole town. When are you going to tell Mr. Bullard? Well, Marjorie, Mr. Bullard's quite an excitable man, and I'll get it. Hi, Commissioner. Hello, Marjorie. Come on in, Floyd. We're ready to go. I closed up shop the minute you called, Commissioner. Left Dr. Needham in the chair with half a haircut. He'll have to preach his sermon sideways tomorrow. <laughs> this is an emergency, Floyd. Yeah, I stopped by for my gun. May get the sights between me and a duck. Got my dog out on the running board, too. Floyd, this is not a duck hunt. Two little boys are lost. Well, he's good at picking up a scent. Rat terrier. Well, bring him along, then. Sure, he's got a good nose. Every year when the mother-in-law comes to visit, he starts whining a week before she gets here. <laughs> Let's go without a hooker, Floyd. Let's get down to the creek. I still think Leroy will come home. I refuse to worry. Well, maybe that's him on the porch now. Leroy? Oh, hello, Judge. Well, Gildy, I have great news for you. You have? Come in, come in. Yes, after I heard you say that Leroy had become engrossed in the adventures of Tom Sawyer, I... Oh, good afternoon, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Go on, Hooker. Where is he? Where's who? 
Oh, hello, Floyd. Hi, Judge. Ye gods, Judge. Where is Leroy? Leroy? How should I know? But you just said you had great news. I do. As I started to say, when I learned that Leroy was so interested in Tom Sawyer, I went out and found him another great Mark Twain book. Uh -huh. Life on the Mississippi. But, Judge, he's lost on the creek now. What? All afternoon, Judge. He and little Craig Bullard. Well, I doubt if they're in any real trouble, but they'll soon be dying. We're going right down to look for him. Good. Where's Mr. Bullard? You've told him, haven't you? Uh, Mr. Bullard? Well, uh, I thought we'd find the boys first, Judge, and then tell him. Well, let's do something before my dog loses interest and goes home. <laughs> Obviously, the first thing to do is to tell the boy's father. He'll be as concerned about Craig as you are about Leroy. Gildy? How about you telling him, Horace? Floyd and I'll wait in the car with the dog. You're my lawyer. Now, Gildy, don't be a baby. Floyd and I'll go along with you, if you like. But you have to tell him. All right. I'll tell him. Sure, Commish. And I'll keep the motor running, too. Red-hander. I'm not the red-hander. I'm the chair of the sea. You're not. I am, too. Well, what are we arguing about pirates for, anyway? We're just building a rocket to the moon. Yeah. Who wants to build a dopey raft like Tom Sawyer? Well, Craig, someday you'll learn you got to humor your parents. Hand me the exhaust pipe, Buck Rogers. Okay, Flash. Hey, what's that noise? What noise? Uh, probably some cows coming down to the creek. That's no cow. That's your uncle. <laughs> yeah, and your father. Hey, what are they doing down here? If they're looking for us, let's call them. Shh. Lay down behind the bushes and be quiet. If they ever find us building a rocket again, we'll really catch heck. But I want to go home. Didn't, uh, didn't see any trace of them, eh, Mr. Bullard? Well, nothing from the farmhouse to the bridge, Gildersleeve. Uh, I, I covered the other side. Not a sign. The raft would still be floating, wouldn't it? Of course. Then we'd better sit down here and wait for the others. Maybe I'd better go meet Floyd and the judge. No, huh? no, Gildersleeve. You might miss them. We said we'd all meet here. Besides, you've worn yourself out. Sit down and rest. <laughs> Mr. Bullard, I must say you've been mighty decent about this. Not knowing where little Craig is or what may have happened. Hey, they think we're lost. I'm going to call them. Shh, we better wait for a chance and sneak home. If this turns out to be their idea of a prank, we ought to teach them a lesson they'll remember. You see? Keep quiet. Do you uh, really suppose they've run away? Oh, they'll show up all right, Gildersleeve. Don't worry. Oh, sure. Yeah, they'll show up. You really think so? Sure. Sure they will. Don't worry. Well, I'm not worrying. Don't you worry. No, I'm not worrying. <laughs> By George, Mr. Bullard, you're all right. I've always liked you. <laughs> Get him. You're not a bad sort yourself, Gildersleeve. A regular guy. Mr. Bullard? Why don't you come over for Thanksgiving dinner? Well, why don't you come over to my house? Larger house. No, you come over to my house. Bigger turkey. Well, <laughs> if you insist, Gildersleeve. You bet. We'll have roast turkey, cranberries, and pumpkin pie, and all the trimmings. <laughs> What's the matter, Gildersleeve? I couldn't eat a bite. Not unless little Leroy is there. Oh, for corn's sake, why don't they go home so we can go home? Uh. Getting dark, Gildersleeve. Yeah. Awfully chilly, too. Leroy will need his little Mackinac. Well? Well? Bullard? Yes? Well, we better wait for Floyd and the judge. I'm getting cold, Leroy. Let's surrender. Shh. Just can't understand why Leroy had do this thing. He wasn't a bad boy. Best-hearted kid in the whole world. Well, Craig never went looking for trouble. 
Sweetest little fella you ever saw. <laughs> Leroy was sweet, too. Oh, brother. <laughs> uh, looks like a sad holiday season, boy. Yes. I had such great plans for Craig's Christmas. I had quite a Christmas plan for Leroy, too. Come on, Leroy. Shut up. They're talking about Christmas. I was, uh, I was going down to Hogan Brothers tomorrow and buy Craig a power saw outfit. Oh, boy, a power saw. I was going to buy Leroy a saw. Can I use your powered one, Craig? And I already ordered a chemistry set. I was going to order one, too. Jeepers, you hear that, Craig? I'm going to get a chemistry set, too. Yes, it was going to be quite a Christmas. I was getting Craig a new bicycle. So was I, for Leroy. I was even thinking of buying little Craig a Shetland pony. I was definitely going to get Leroy a pony. Palomino. What a Christmas. If only Leroy could be here to enjoy it. Hi, is he kidding? Hey, you got me there. Here I am. Wait for me, Leroy. Leroy. Craig, come here, my boy. Leroy, where have you been? We've been here. You're safe. Wonderful. That's wonderful. That little Leroy. God, don't, don't squeeze me so hard. Just so glad to see you, my boy. Sure sounds like we're going to have a big Christmas, huh? Leroy, how much did you hear? <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. If your family insists on a good big slice of cheddar cheese alongside of every piece of pie, you should get acquainted with Kraft's latest triumph. It's a wonderfully mellow, natural cheddar with a real melt-in-your-mouth texture. And what's more, what's new, it's made of pasteurized milk. The name is K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand. It's the rich and mellow-tasting cheddar made of pasteurized milk. And K-Brand ages right in its own spick-and-span wrapper. At your dealers, you'll see the big bar and the sparkling wrapper marked K-Brand Natural all down the top and sides. Have your dealer cut you a good big portion, for this cheese is going to be a family favorite. Remember the name, K-Brand, the natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. You're pretty sore, Honk. Maybe I won't get all of those things for Christmas. Well, we'll see, Leroy. You may get all of them at that. You mean it? A saw, a, a chemistry set, bicycle, and a pony? That's pretty expensive. Well, expense may not be an object this year, my boy. I've been checking up on how much money this fellow Mark Twain made. Yeah? And I think I'll write a book about you. It'll sell twice as many copies as that piker Tom Sawyer. Good night, my boy. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Neekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Dorothy Lemour will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. I won't. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Lady, are you having a hard time planning main dishes that stay within your food budget? Then get a couple packages of Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. Each package of Kraft Dinner costs very little, but it contains enough quick-cooking macaroni and golden Kraft grated to make macaroni and cheese for four people. In only seven minutes cooking time, you have a main dish that's delicious. Fluffy light macaroni with grand cheddar cheese flavor through and through. Look for the yellow and blue package, plainly marked Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.